Some call it the Wars of the Jews. Others call it the Sabbath War. This demonstration in downtown Jerusalem is the latest clash between the city's ultra-Orthodox and secular communities. All the demonstrators, as well as all the policemen, are Jews. The ultra-Orthodox protesters, Haredim in Hebrew, are demonstrating against what they view as the desecration of the Sabbath by secular Jews. Last year, Haredi militants defaced or set fire to dozens of Jerusalem bus shelters in protest against what they considered to be lewd advertisements posted inside. This year, they've been protesting for six weeks against the recent attempt by commercial movie houses in Jerusalem to screen films on Friday night, the Sabbath Eve, which for them is a clear desecration of the holy day. Israel's Jewish population is pluralistic. It's made up of people with very different ideas of what sort of Jewish society Israel should be. The spectrum ranges from those who feel it should be completely secular to those who believe it should be totally theocratic. The majority of the population is secular. They don't observe religious laws, they don't necessarily keep kosher, and they drive their cars on the Sabbath. Another large section of the population is the modern Orthodox. They observe the religious laws with varying degrees of strictness and see no conflict between their religious beliefs and contemporary religious society. The ultra-Orthodox are a small but highly organized community, numbering less than 10% of Israel's Jewish population, but making up about a quarter of Jerusalem's Jewish residents. The more extreme among the ultra-Orthodox deny the validity of the Jewish state, which they believe can only be established when the Messiah comes, and not by Zionism. Nevertheless, there are two ultra-Orthodox parties in the Knesset, Israel's parliament. The Agudat Yisrael and Shas parties wield considerable power, sometimes the balance of power, in Israel's coalition system of government. Over the years, they have managed to acquire state funding for their schools. Religious exemption from military service for their young men and all religiously observant women, and the grounding of the national airline, El Al, on the Sabbath. But the ultra-Orthodox considered these concessions from the secular powers to be only first steps along the road to their ultimate goal, which is the establishment of a Jewish state governed by religious law. When the State of Israel was established in 1948, an historic compromise known as the Status Quo Agreement was worked out by Israel's first Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion, with the religious parties. This agreement determined that public institutions such as the army be kosher, that a separate religious school system be set up, and that the Jewish Sabbath be the official day of rest. In Jerusalem, because of the city's special character, the status quo has meant not permitting businesses, not even restaurants and movie theaters, to remain open on the Sabbath. The Meir Sharim district of Jerusalem is an ultra-Orthodox enclave. Before the Sabbath, barricades are put up by the police to prevent secular Jews from driving through the neighborhood and thus desecrating the Sabbath. But on the other side of the barricades, particularly in the country's democratically elected parliament, Israel's secular majority feels increasingly threatened by what is commonly referred to as the forces of religious coercion. In Israel, the enforcement of the religious status quo on a national basis is in the hands of the chief rabbinate. This institution, established during the British mandate, remains the supreme religious authority for Israel's Jews. The rules it governs by are those of strict orthodoxy, and this is why the two largest Jewish movements abroad, the Reform and Conservative, are not recognized in the state of Israel. There are Reform and Conservative synagogues, but their rabbis are not licensed to perform marriages. Indeed, the official religious establishment does not recognize them as rabbis at all. This monolithic control over Jewish life in Israel is continually being challenged by Jews of other streams. It is a struggle over Jewish identity, the fundamental question of who is a Jew. It is a battle of ideas that necessarily involves the entire Jewish community of the diaspora, no less than the Jews of Israel.